up, YouTube? It's your boy Chris from Rockstar Bullets. Here with a little informational video for you guys. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about a couple things regarding, you know, show training and things that I see a lot of people do that, you know, really you can improve on, so you don't do those mistakes. Uh, you know, it's a lot of mistakes that I see people do, and one of those things is how much tension they put on this lead and how they put the lead on. Let me talk about a little bit about the lead and the tension that you put on it. If you're putting way too much pressure on this lead and way too much tension on the lead, you're gonna choke your dog out. I've seen it, you know, where people are going around the ring and they're holding the dog like this and the dog is like, <laughs> you know, it, it sounds like it's about to pass out at any given moment. So it's very important that you get your dog to where the dog knows, okay, maybe, you know, a, a little uh, pull here and there is going to correct him, but the dog already knows, okay, I don't want to get pulled, you know, or I don't want them to give me a little tug, so they're not going to do what they're doing at a given moment. But it's very important that you learn not to put too much pressure on the dog with the lead. Uh, you know, just... Hold it, if anything, hold it with two fingers and just practice going up and down. That's what we're about to do. Come on, bro. Good boy. Oh. Good boy. Oh. Good boy. As you guys see right there, at the end, once we came back, I gave him a little tug. Why? Because that's letting him know, okay, I want you to stop. That's an indication right there. So, it's very important, like I said, you practice how much tension you put on the lead. You don't want to put too much because you're going to choke your dog out and it's going to affect his show performance. And guess what? You're being judged from the way the dog looks to the way he performs in the ring. And also, you're, you're, you're stressing the dog out more than what it is already. You know, especially if it's been, if it's his first show or her first show, whatever. They're already gonna be nervous. So you're gonna stress them out even more if you're you know, sitting here tugging on the dog and putting a lot of pressure. Another thing I wanna talk about is how you put the lead on a dog. And this is another mistake that I see. Come here, boy. And I'm gonna try to get real close to the camera. You guys see that, it's okay. You guys see that ring right there. That ring should always be on the bottom side of his neck, as you guys see right there. When you take the lead off, when you take the lead off, it should form a P shape. Good boy. Stay. As you guys see right there, it should form a P shape. You hold it up in the air, and it should be forming a P, as you guys see right there. And then you just put it over the dog's neck. And it's gonna be, as you guys see, come here, Papa. Come here, Papa. And this, this is my boy. He's like, he's like one of my sons. So all he wants to do is just be close to me. But as you guys see, it's on the bottom side of his neck, as such. And that's how you want to do it. That way, when you give a dog a nice, quick correction, stay. It goes back down. Come here, boy. As you guys see, I give the dog a quick correction. I'm sorry. Like I said, he wants to be loved on right now. But as you guys see, when I give him a quick correction, you see that right there in the neck. And you see how it goes down. You see how the lead, after I give him the quick correction, head up. It goes right back down. Right back down. That's what you want. You don't want you don't want the hoop to be on the opposite side because if you're giving that dog a correction, the dog's gonna be like that because you're yanking the dog when you're doing that because the lead's not going down. So that's very important also. Another thing that I see when it comes to these shows is not knowing your dog's gait. For example, 
his gait is way different than, you know, one of the other dogs that I have in there uh, by the name of Loco. Loco gait is way different than his gait. You know, I got to go a little bit slow with him. With him, you know, I'm short. He's, he's you know, standard. So I got to kind of speed it up a little bit to keep up with him to where it doesn't affect his, his movement. So that's another thing that's very important that you guys figure out how to do and, and what, you know, speed to go at with your dog. Uh, another thing is figure out what works better for you. Bait, baiting the dog, you know, having a, a ball or treat and baiting the dog that way, or just hands on, you know, stacking up a dog and that's all you do. Maybe you give him, a, you know, some attention here and there, like good boy, good girl, and leave it at that. So that's another thing that you want to figure out. Uh, I see a lot of handlers or so-called handlers that take a dog they've never worked with and really, instead of making the dog look better and the dog, you know, shining, because it's a, it's a nice dog, but they don't know what they're doing with the dog or whatever and it makes the dog look like crap so it's very important that you guys get to know the dog and there's good handlers out there and there's some that need a little bit more work and it, it all you gotta you know you gotta see that you gotta give the dog the best chance at winning as possible uh another thing Make sure, make sure, make sure that your dog is clean when you take him in the show ring because the judges like a nice, clean, groomed dog. Uh, you know, make sure you get the whiskers, make sure uh, the dog is nice and you know, clean, nice and groomed to where you're not, you're not having hair fall on, you know, off the dog all the time. Uh, you know, one spot here and there is not gonna hurt, but if you're anything like me and you're OCD and you want everything to perfection, then spots like that is gonna bother you. Uh, but enough with that being said, you know, let's get into a whole nother topic, which is I'm gonna show you how to stack up the dog and how I do it. Uh, there's two forms of stacking up dogs. One of them, you know, it's easier if you do it with smaller dogs, like your pockets not so easy with dogs you know that are a little bigger like easy for example he's a standard he he's not as easy to pick up completely and set to where you know his feet are set right as soon as I put him down it's, it's kind of hard you know it's hard on myself it's hard on him so with him I just kind of move his legs one at a time as you guys are about to see and that works better for us but yeah let's get with that being said, let's get right into the whole stacking up. And again, guys, I want to real quick throw it out there. Thank you all for watching my videos. Thank you all for subscribing. Uh, interact with me. Ask me any questions. Uh, comment down below on my videos if you want me to make a video of something else. Uh, I know for right now I've been getting a lot of questions about, you know, showing and uh, how I do this or how I do that. And I'm also, you know, going to show you a couple things that I'm about to do with this boy to get his way back up to, you know, where we hit the next show and he's he's where we want him to be. Uh, Training-wise, he's there. I think we've also got him, you know, comfortable with the situation of being around that area and that circle of people. But, yeah, guys, let me uh, take him down and back for you guys. And when I stack a dog up, guys, I like to, me personally, I like to hold him by the muzzle and proceed to move a leg at a time. Good boy. Cool. As you guys see, I'm moving one leg at a time, real slow. 
just like that. Oh. Oh, what the boy. And once you got the dog stacked up, give him some loving. Good boy. Hold. But at the same time, tell him to hold. And I keep my finger right underneath his jaw. Barely on there. Not enough to where I'm hurting him or anything. But enough to where I have control of the dog. I can turn his head if I want to. Left or right. You know, I can push him back. I can make him lean forward. You want to, you know, you want to have complete control of the dog when you're stacking him up. Uh, as you guys see, and like I said, he is a little underweight, but give me about a week, two weeks, and you guys are, are going to see a completely different dog. And I, I'm also going to, you know, put my recipe out there of what I do. But you guys see how I stack him up. He's happy. He's confident. He's wagging his tail. Good boy. I'm going to take him down back for you guys again. Good boy. Oh. Good boy. And that's another thing, guys. When you take him down and back, when you take him down and back a couple times and then practice bring him back and stop him. Just like a judge is going to tell you, stop right there. Or stop the dog right there and he's gonna you know take out his hand or he's gonna take out a little squeaky toy you're gonna squeak it so get your dog used to that get your dog used to looking up at you um so the judge can really you know have a clear shot of the dog come here Boba. but after you do that practice going in circles which is you know the little circle that they make you do guys see I'm working in a small area so I really can't move as good and still you know keep uh, focus in the camera so his gait might not be perfect right now but once I get a little help uh, I'll get someone to come out here and record with me and you know really follow me so you guys can see what I'm talking about with the gait but it's very important that you get your dog used to that that motion, that that uh, speed, and that gait. So remember, guys, is the way you put on the lead, or how much tension you put on the lead, the gait, and you know having control of the dog when you're stacking the dog up. All those are very important things that are going to help you out if you're thinking about being a handler or show training dogs for other people, or even showing your own dog. All those things are gonna help you a lot, and I can tell you that from personal, you know, experience. And there's always you're always gonna learn a whole lot of things, a whole lot more. You know, it's kind of like anything else that we do in life. Uh, you never, you never stop learning, really. But and also, before I forget, a lot of patience, a lot of patience. When you train your dog, have a lot of patience. Uh, when I first got him, he was he was all over the place. Uh, you know, he listened to me, but he was so scared that he wanted to do what he wanted to do at the time that he wanted to do it. Now, you know, I can move and he'll follow me. As you guys see, you know, it's all about building a bond with the dog as well. And the dog being able to trust you. And with that being said, guys, that's gonna be it for this video. If you have any questions, any concerns, or anything that you want me to make a video about, uh, make sure you comment, you subscribe down below, and you keep liking our videos. Uh, please make sure you share, let other people, you know, into uh, what we're doing and let other people you know get some of this knowledge that i'm i'm sharing with you guys but with that being said guys 
I got more videos coming, more in detail videos. Uh, it is a little hard, you know, making them right off of my tripod, but I will be getting more and more uh, good quality videos for you and really showing you, you know, different things uh, and different ways of doing things. And also, you know, like I mentioned, the two, the two ways of stacking up a dog. I just showed you one, which is the, you know, picking the leg up one by one. But once I get one of my smaller dogs out of here, I'll show you guys the other way, which is, you know, really picking the fronts up and placing them. You know, maybe you might want to turn in the legs a little bit and really placing the dog and then fixing the hind legs, the rear legs, you know. That's the other way. But yeah, with that being said, guys, I'll get to that. Thank you all. God bless you all. Till next time, peace.